Hi folks, Matthew here with Disaster Area Designs, and I would like to thank you for being part of the DMC Micro Firmware Version 2 Beta Test Program. This is a short introductory video explaining the differences, enhancements, and new features of DMC Micro Version 2.0. When you get your beta firmware package, you'll find instructions in the package regarding how to perform a firmware update. And then you'll need to perform a factory reset in order to set the DMC Micro to the correct default state. Basically what this does is it erases all your presets, it sets up the new configuration and new preset system, and then gives you a blank slate so that you can start building your own presets and setting up your device control. After you do your firmware update, power the unit on, and then while you see the display scrolling, hold both foot switches down. You'll see the unit flash reset, and then it will count down from 100 down to zero. Wait for the countdown to finish, and then power cycle the controller. So now we're just gonna power cycle it, and it should scroll disaster area gen three, it should show the firmware version and your serial number, and then it should go to preset 00. Now, there are two ways to get into the setup menu. The old way of holding the left button at power on, that still works. However, you can also just hold both buttons and you can enter setup at any time. So this is a significant improvement over the previous version. It means that when you need to make setup changes, you don't have to bend over, pick up the thing, unplug it, there's none of that. You just hold both foot switches and wait for it to go into setup mode. So here are the items in setup mode. I'm gonna cover all of them briefly and then we'll do a little bit of explanation on the ones that are significantly different. Uh, preset displays how many presets the unit can access in preset mode, that's the P mode. This defaults to 12, it can be anything from zero, meaning no presets at all, all the way up to 99, which is 100 presets. P channels. This sets the channels on which the DMC Micro will send out MIDI changes in preset mode. So for example, if you have three devices connected, you could set this to ABC, ABC, and it would send out MIDI data on all three of those channels. Dev. This is how many scrolling devices are connected. It defaults to dev A to control one device. On version two, it goes all the way to dev D, which means you can control up to four different scrolling devices. Dev A, B, C, and D select which device is on which channel. A is channel one, B is channel two, and so on. So for example, if you have timeline, big sky, a tonal Recall and an Alexander Marshmallow, you would set this for Strymon, Strymon, Chase Bliss, Alexander. This is the same as the previous version. There's no major differences there. Next we come to Util, but what's this weird thing? Well, it's supposed to be an X, sorry. We're gonna change that to a one in the next beta. Util X, and you can set this to off or on which enables util X mode or util one. And then we have util Y, which is new. So util Y has some options here. It has off, it has looper A, B, C, and D, meaning it will send out looper commands on one of those four channels, or it has util two. If you set this to util two, you get a second configurable util mode. So if you use the looper mode, this can be your looper mode. If you don't use the looper mode and you prefer to have some extra commands, you can use it as a util too. The next thing is brand new. This is clock, sorry, that can't display a K, the limitation of the display itself. Okay, so the clock mode has a couple of options. Off, meaning no clock mode. Preset, meaning we send out a new tempo for each new preset. So you can store your tempo for every preset individually. And then global, meaning the unit will send out a constant global tempo, regardless of what preset you're in. You can set this any way you like. All right, now all the next stuff, this X, LT, LN, LH, LC, RN, 
These are all controls for the util modes, and we're gonna go over those in a separate video. It's pretty dense. It's not something that everybody needs. <clears throat> okay, once you get past the util setup, we come to the jack menu. So the jack menu is mostly the same as the previous version. We have expression pedal, uh, remote foot switch. Um, this foot switch is for tap tempo only. This really should say tap, we'll change that. Normally open, tap output, and uh, MIDI tip, MIDI ring, MIDI tip and ring, MIDI IO, uh, util, this is special, we'll come back to that. Normally closed. So normally open and normally closed now work with the clock mode and you can send out constant taps from the controller to your devices. So you can connect say a DD7 or a, a Flint or a Walrus ARP87, anything that has a tap tempo input, you can connect and the DMC will send out taps to them, kind of like a mini smart clock. Um, the other new thing is util. If you set this to util, you can actually connect a double foot switch or expression pedal and define what those messages are. So you can have two extra util buttons or uh, an expression pedal that has its own control. So if you need to control something specific on a device, you can set that up here. Again, we're gonna cover util mode in a separate video. Oh, whoops, I hit save. However, will I get back into setup mode? I'm just gonna do this, just hold both buttons. Okay, so where were we? Yes, util mode. Let's set jack back to expression, that's fine. Okay, jack channel, this controls the channels on which the expression or MIDI messages on the jack are sent to or sent from. These are the controls for the expression or util jack function. Again, we don't need those. Tap length, this only affects the tap coming out of the multi-jack. Again, we'll cover that later. Hold, this is how long do you need to hold the foot switches in order to trigger the, the short hold press. Uh, if you have issues with the controller taking too long to go between, you can set this to short. If you have issues with it accidentally going into the hold functions, you can set this to long so that it works the way your foot works. USB has two options, MIDI and host. The MIDI setting is the one where you can connect this to your DAW or your iPad or something, and this acts like a MIDI controller. The USB host is where this acts like a computer itself, and you can use it for connecting to things like the USB ports on Alexander pedals here, let me see, there, sorry, not in frame, uh, there, or Source Audio C4, whatever. Defaults to MIDI, probably leave it there if you're not using it. Input channel. This is the channel on which the DMC will respond to incoming MIDI. If you've watched my DMC micro rig rundown video on how to use this as a preset expander, this is the channel that the HX effects would talk to the DMC micro using. So uh, I've got it set to 16 in that case. So I send a message from 16, it comes in here. This sees a message on 16 in response. You can set this to anything you want, including 16 or MIDI here where it's just off. Okay, um, through, this is, this controls the MIDI interfaces on the DMC itself. So this is the five pin here, it has five pins. The jack, all, and the USB. So <clears throat> the way this works is MIDI data coming in one of these interfaces can either go up, back out again or not. Depending on how you're using it, you may need to configure these differently. Mostly you can just leave it set to five pin, that's the default. That means data that comes in the five pin goes back out the five pin. It also will go out the USB in the multi-jack, but data coming in the multi-jack or data coming in the USB won't go anywhere else. So that's mostly how you need to leave it. Um, this is util load, this is completely new. This allows you to, there you go. Looks like there's a bug in our display code there. We'll have to fix that. So, boop, 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 boop. Um, the util load, we're gonna cover in another video. And the way this works is you can set the util load for X 
Y, Jack, or any combination of those three. And when you load a preset, the state of any expression, MIDI, anything that's in that preset that's set to toggle will recall the saved state. So as an example, if you have a command in your util mode that toggles an expression or a channel switch or something of that nature, you can set that to on and then save the preset. And when the preset loads again, that same command will set itself back to on or off. That lets you do some rudimentary configuration stuff where the expression uh, util mode stuff recalls. And you can set it granularly so that only the X, only the Y, only the Jack, or any combination all works. Uh, we'll get the this cleaned up before you see it. Okay, display brightness, self-explanatory. Display bright, display dim, defaults to four. Sysx dump, this lets you dump your presets to your computer. Uh, you can also copy back your presets from the computer. And that's something that this is, it's working actually very well in this version. It was not supported previously. Uh, and then reset. And this is the same reset that we access with holding the two buttons of power on. It has a few other features in here that you really don't need, but this is, this is all. And then this is production and this is back. So basically um, we have a special setup that we use in production for testing these. So you probably won't need it. It's for you guys, it's pretty much just all. Okay, and that's it. So that is all of the configuration mode stuff. When you're done, you hold the right button to save. If you need to get back in, you hold both buttons. So pretty straightforward. All the modes are very similar to the previous version. So if you've been using your DMC Micro for a while, none of this will be a big surprise. Preset mode, loads, and recalls groups of presets from your Scrolling mode devices, hold the left button to bypass. You can see the little dot turns off there, as well as the big LED. Util 1, and you can configure what these messages are and how they work. I've got this set up for 97, 98, 99 CCs, all toggle. Util 2, 44, 42, 46. These are useful for the H9 or anything. You can set up whatever you want. Clock mode, it's with T because we use C for device C. You can see that we are tapping, right? Tap, 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 tap. Either button will tap. When you tap, the right button, the right LED will turn on to show that it's waiting for a second tap. So if you tap and you don't tap again before this goes off, it won't set the tempo. But if you tap, if you tap like an odd number of times, this will stay on to let you know that the next tap will be received as a tap tempo. So this is just a little friendly warning. Okay, so there's three ways you can use clock mode. This is tapping with the light as blue. If you hold the left button, the light turns red and you can just change the BPM by moving up and down. So if you need to dial in a very specific BPM, you can do that. And then if you hold the left button again, you'll see we have division. So we have quarter, triplet, eighth, dotted eighth, and you can cycle through those. It's important to note that these divisions only affect what comes out the multi-jack. If you're using this to send MIDI clock, MIDI clock is just 24 messages per quarter note. There's no divisions. Your device has to do the division for you. So MIDI clock is just quarter notes. It's just 24 pulses per quarter, and that's it. If you connect something to the multi-jack for NO or NC, then you can use the divisions. Otherwise, the divisions are ignored. Okay, and then once you're back, you can still tap, set it to whatever tempo you want. Uh, it goes all the way down to 30. So if you need to turn the clock off and save it, just take the tempo all the way down to 30, basically 29 here. And see it's off. And as soon as you go to 30, it's on. So we'll make this say off. This is something that we're we're still tweaking the way the display looks. But this is tempo off is under 30, and then anything over 30, 30 or above, is on. So if you save the preset, this will disable the MIDI clock. So that's useful for example, if you have a delay that you want to set to a slapback, you can't really get the tempo fast enough to do a proper slapback. So you 
disable the clock and then set the tempo manually on your delay. Okay, and then you're back to the preset mode. So that's it, uh, 15 minutes. I'm sorry it took so long, but there's a lot of cool new stuff in here. By the time you guys get your beta units, we will have cleaned up some of the stuff in the setup menu and the clock menu will make that look a little prettier. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys find any issues, any bugs, need any enhancements, um, there will be a, a template in the beta email of how to report bugs and request features. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This is a huge update that we're providing to everybody at no charge. I uh, want to thank you for being Disaster Area customers, DMC Micro users. This is my favorite little controller that we've ever made. I use one myself. I've been using it since it came out. I just love this thing. And I just wanted to make it better and cooler and more fun for everybody. So thanks so much for watching. And we'll hit you guys up with another video for util mode stuff. Um, specifically about configuring the util mode to do things you want and using the util load, uh, util recall, and multi-jack util functions. So thanks for watching.